Welcome, all of you AI builders. When we were thinking of starting off this conference, um, Alice, who led organizing this, and I were looking around and realized that there are lots of great academic conferences promoting research work, like NeurIPS and ICMO and iClear. And there are also lots of great per company conferences often organized around a single company's products. But yet, even though this feels like a golden age to be an AI developer, to be an AI builder, we didn't find many good vendor neutral organizations bringing people together just for the sake of the community to learn and to code and to socialize and to have fun. And so we want to put that together because I think this moment is the best time I have ever seen in history to be an AI builder. And when all of us do it together as a community, we're much better off than doing it alone. What I want to do today is um, share with you what I'm seeing in AI development and AI building, and maybe two of the big trends about why I think things are getting better and better for all of us. So this is what I think of as an AI stack, the semiconductors, um, clouds, foundation models, and then increasingly in agentic orchestration layer. And these are the AI technology layers. Tons of exciting work, tons of amazing work done at all of these layers. And despite all the attention on the technology layers, I think um, the biggest opportunities will be on building AI applications. Um, after you have mastered especially a lot of these wonderful technologies that are available to us. And I want to share with you a mental picture that I have as I go about often building applications and learning or spending time about the technology layers, which is I feel like a lot of the technology companies have built and are giving us wonderful Lego bricks or building us, giving us wonderful building blocks. So for example, to someone that has just learned prompting to call an API, to call an OM API, you know, learning that skill is like if someone's given you a lot of uh, plain white Lego bricks. And that's fantastic. You can build some really cool stuff with plain white Lego bricks. And then when you learn about RAG, is as if someone gives you a black Lego brick as well. You can put that together to form more complex things. And then maybe you learn about how to build chatbots um, and you get your blue Lego bricks that allows you to combinatorially do even more. And then you learn a little bit about um, reasoning models or how to use an AI coding assistant is that you get a red Lego brick and a little yellow one and allows you to build more and more complex things so that as you accumulate more skills and using these wonderful tools around us, you can end up building some really incredible things over time. And um, I actually take a lot of deep learning courses myself uh, in order to stay current and get up to speed. And whenever I you know, go to our website and look at different courses and, and, and try to learn new things, this is the picture I actually have in my head, which is to think of all of these as new Lego bricks. And I feel like the more Lego bricks any of us have, the better we can put them together in amazing combinations to build things that just no one on the planet could have built even one or two years ago. So I think the first of the two major reasons I'm excited to be an AI builder today is this amazing, bewildering array of Lego bricks that um, many companies, including many of Deep Learning AI's partners that I'm grateful to be able to work with, is making available to all of us, frankly, amazingly cheaply most of the time. Um, there's a second reason why I think AI building is, is, is entering the best stage we've ever seen in history, and that's um, AI coding assistance. You know, some people today are still advising others not to code, not to learn to code, because they think AI will automate it. I think we'll look back at this as some of the worst career advice <laughs> ever given. When our field over many decades moved from punch cards, which are huge pain to use, to keyboards, coding became easier. So more people learned to code. Uh, and when we moved from assembly language to high level languages, coding became easier. Uh, and even though people thought Fortran would make programming obsolete, the opposite happened. Um, when we moved from text editors to IDEs, and then IDEs to AI enabled IDEs, and maybe even value coding some days of the week. Coding is becoming easier. And when something becomes easier, I think people should do a lot more of it. And um, I want to share with you one thing that really shaped, one experience I had that really shaped how I think about this, which is uh, a couple of years ago, I was working on this um, course on Coursera, Generative AI for Everyone. 
and we needed to generate artwork you know, for the background imagery, right? There's that picture. I was working with Tommy Nelson, um, who has studied art history. So because Tommy knew the language of art, he could prompt my journey with words pertaining to the era and the artist's inspiration and the palette and the genre and get really nice results. Whereas I, never having studied you know, art history in depth, I mean, I go, please make some pretty robot pictures for me. And I just could not get the results that someone that knew the language of art could. And I see the same thing today. Someone that understands the language of programming is able to get a computer to do what they want much more accurately and precisely. And in the future, one of the most important skills for software engineers and also not for software engineers is the ability to tell a computer exactly what you want so they will do it for you will be one of the most important skills for the future. But you need to know how to instruct it to achieve that result. Lastly, um, the other reason why I think AI-assisted coding is unleashing a lot of creativity is, is this trend, which is that when I think about the software work that I do, you know, sometimes I build quick and dirty prototypes to test an idea, and sometimes I work on production software, be it a scale-up you know, production-grade software or working on maintaining or updating a legacy code base. And I haven't managed to find very, lots of very rigorous studies on how much AI assistance boosts productivity, but depending on which consultant report you trust, you know, maybe writing production software or maintaining legacy code bases, I don't know, maybe it's like 20 to 50% faster with AI assisted coding, which is fantastic, you know, 20 to 50% productivity boosts, that's, that's amazing. But when I look at what many of my friends and I are able to do with building prototypes is not a 50% improvement in speed. It feels more like a 10x improvement in productivity. And there are a few reasons for this. When you're writing standalone prototypes to test out an idea, you're a cool idea, let's go build it. Um, standalone prototypes, less integration with legacy software or legacy data. Um, if you're just prototyping for yourself, the reliability, security, and so on requirements are lower. You know, I built something, I'm the only user, only runs my laptop. You know, it's, it's okay if it's not secure to hackers because I'm the only user, I'm not gonna hack my own software you know, for now. Um, and so because of that, I'm seeing that the cost of prototyping has plummeted and it is now possible Many of my friends tell me this too. Many of us are building things in an afternoon that previously would have taken us a few weeks or maybe one or two months to build. And this is generating a new mechanism, a new way to invent things, which is now, instead of needing to really plan out exactly what you prototype, on many weekends, I'll go, you know what, I have an idea. Let me spend two hours and code it up. And if it works, great. If it doesn't work, everyone needs to see the light today because I only burn two hours and maybe learn something along the way. And I think this is speeding up the pace of invention, of innovation um, for many individuals, startups, as well as large companies. I know in Silicon Valley, the mantra, move fast and break things, got a bad rep because, you know, it broke things. I think some people took away from this the idea that we should not move fast, but I think that's a mistake. To me, my updated version of this mantra is um, move fast and be responsible. And I do see many teams that are able to move incredibly quickly, ship products in, in responsible ways in very small numbers of days and get feedback and keep on iterating. And I find this to be an important skill set and mechanism to invent new things. So lastly, um, just to wrap up, I feel like these two trends we're seeing, the amazing building blocks that so many companies have invented and are making available to us, and then also AI-assisted coding, making all of us more um, productive and able to build things faster. I think the combination of those two things makes this the best time ever to be an AI builder. And um, I want to bring everyone together to learn from each other, to maybe in today's sessions, go get some more Lego bricks, or go get some more building blocks in today's sessions. And I hope that through today, you um, learn some things, have fun, make some friends. And um, after today, you'll go home and go build, build, build. Thank you.